In this video, we'll be walking you through the process of how to export a garment from vStitcher and render it using Blender. We'll provide some tips and tricks along the way to enhance your rendering workflow to achieve a flawless result. Let's begin. You can either import a garment from Cloud Library to work on or make it from scratch. In this case, we're going to use a pre-prepared file. The garments we're using are a pair of high-waisted jeans imported from the Cloud Library, a t-shirt with artwork, and a jacket which we created by importing a Smart Design shirt and altered it to be a jacket. The material for our pattern pieces are denim, jersey, and corduroy. As you can see, we already colored the stitching according to the color scheme of the outfit, as well as the artwork on the t-shirt and the trims. The garments have already been stitched and arranged. We'll upload a snapshot of the simulated garment. The avatar is in an A pose, however, I would like to change to a different pose. Before doing so, we'll go to Styling and select Advanced to choose the hood pieces and lock them so they won't collide with the jacket in the simulation. You can either select a pose from the list or create your own. For this outfit, we'll use the walking pose. Once the simulation is complete, we can save a snapshot and export the dressed avatar. To export the avatar, go to File, Export. We can export either OBJ files or FBX files into Blender. The FBX file will export each pattern piece separately, whereas the OBJ exports it as one object. We'll export the file as an OBJ file. In the Export Setting window, we'll choose to include the avatar. Under Geometry, we'll check the options for garment inside and thickness. For the baked textures, we'll use the PNG option. Under UV settings, we'll check the single UV layout per piece and keep proportions. It is important to change the avatar's rotation in advanced settings to Y axis. This way the avatar and garment will be imported into Blender in a stand up straight position. If you don't check the Y axis, your avatar will be facing upwards. Great, now we're ready to export the avatar and the garment. Once the export is done, a new folder is created. In this folder, you can find the OBJ file and a textures folder. Now we have everything we need, it's time to start rendering. We'll begin by loading up the Blender application. We want to make sure that we have a clear workspace, so we'll select All and hit Delete. Now that we have an empty backdrop, we can import our OBJ file into Blender. Go to File, Import, OBJ, and then select our file. The model came out very big. We'll switch to front view to be able to see the whole model. Simply click on the green button here, or one on the keyboard. Click on the image to view its properties. We can see that the avatar's dimensions are really big. It's 170 meters tall. This is because Blender's default setting is in meters. It automatically changes the centimeter dimensions to meters. But not to worry, we can adjust the measurements easily. Go to Object Properties and set the unit scale by dividing them by 100. Great! Now we have the correct dimensions and we can adjust the avatar to the position that we want. Now that our avatar is the right size and positioned correctly, we can go ahead and add a background. Start by choosing Add in the menu, then Mesh, Plane. This will be used as our floor. Let's also add a wall. Select the floor and choose Edit Mode from the drop-down menu, and click on the Edge Selection Mode icon. Now we'll select the edge of the floor and extrude the edge by clicking on the Extrude icon on the left side menu, and extrude the edge to be a wall. After extruding the edge, we can then return to Object Mode. We can modify the background to different styles. Let's change to a Studio Style background. We'll do this by selecting the plane, then clicking on the modifier panel and bevel modifier. We can then add segments. For an even smoother look, right click our object and select Shade Smooth. We can now choose the positioning of the camera to get the angle we want. To add the camera view, simply click on Add Camera. Once the camera is selected, we can adjust its positioning. Let's also rotate the avatar. We can see that the background is not big enough. We can then scale it on the x-axis in the background so it matches the rendering area and corrects its positioning. 
Let's move a little bit on the axis X by clicking the Move tool or pressing G and then X. Before moving on, let's save our file. Great. Now we can either leave it as it is or add some primitive shapes to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's add a cube. Go to Add, Mesh, Cube, and position it with the Move tool. The same way we can add a cylinder. This can be rotated using the Rotate tool. We just need to find the right position for it. Let's add another cube. This time we'll scale it to be smaller. And move it to the right position. We can use different views to see that all the elements work together. Now let's add some more cubes. Again, we can use the different views to align it correctly with all the other elements. For a more detailed view, we can open another 3D workspace to compare the different views and adjust the positioning and the camera angle accordingly. Once we are happy with the composition, we can click on the rendered viewpoint shading icon. It looks quite dark. Let's add some lights. Let's start by going to the Shader Editor and change it to World. Then we can add an Environment Texture node. This is done by opening up an HDRI and connecting the Environment Texture node with the World Output node. Great, now our scene has more realistic lighting. We can then go to the World Properties on the right side and click on Ambient Occlusion. Make sure to keep the factor number in lower values. Now that we have our lighting in place, we can add materials to our shapes and background. Select a shape and click on Add New Material. Now we can change the shape's color. We'll repeat this step for all the shapes and background. There is still something not quite right with the avatar's hair and eyelashes. Let's fix this. Let's open the Shader Editor and select Eyelashes Material and connect the alpha of the Texture node with the alpha on the BSDF node. We'll do the same for the hair. Once we're happy with the final look, we'll move ahead to the Render Settings. Go to Render Properties and select Cycles as the rendering engine. We'll also increase the sampling number. The higher it is, the better the render, but keep in mind that it increases the render time. We'll check the adaptive sampling to reduce the rendering time. If you start to see white dots appear on your render, it means your sampling number needs to be increased. If we want to achieve a more realistic render, we can select the camera setting and select Depth of Field, then select the object we want to focus on. The lower the number f-stop of our aperture, the more blurred the background will be. For the final step, we'll go back to Solid Viewport Shading and click Render, Render Image. When the rendering is finished, we can save it as a PNG file. And there we have it, a beautifully rendered outfit. Thanks for tuning into our Spotlight session on rendering your V-Stitcher garments in Blender. We hope that with these tools, you'll be able to enjoy a fast and efficient rendering workflow. For more information, go to support.browseware.com.